All right, let's do question four. Um, answer the following questions about the compounds NH2Cl and NCl3. The Lewis electron dot diagrams of the two compounds are shown. Um, A, calculate the number of moles of NH2Cl, uh, which has a molar mass of 51.48 grams per mole, present in a one liter, uh, one liter of a solution in which the concentration of NH2Cl is 0 0.0016 grams per liter. So we know uh, our concentration is 0 0.0016 grams per liter, and we are we have one liter. So uh, we're going to have zero, um, 0 0.0016 grams of NH2Cl. And since we're asked to calculate the number of moles, let's just divide this by the molar mass, which is going to be 51.48 grams. Um, that's per one mole. And if you do out the math on that, so uh, 0.0016 divided by 51.48 uh, that is about 3.1 times 10 to the negative 5 moles and that is your answer let's go on to part b NH2Cl is highly soluble in water whereas NCl3 is nearly insoluble explain this observation in terms of the types and relative strengths of the intermolecular forces between each of the, solute, uh, the solutes and water. If you look at the structures of NH2Cl and NCl3, you realize that both of these are gonna have dipoles. Um, both these compounds are uh, unsymmetric. So in this, um, in NH2Cl, you'll have like a dipole going like this way, sort of-ish. And then in the um, NCl3, you'll have like a similar dipole, maybe this way. Um, it doesn't really matter where the dipole is facing. What matters is the strength of the dipole. If you look at NH2Cl, uh, the electrons, the H's don't really pull for the electrons that much. Um, the chlorine or the nitrogen pulls for the, the electrons a lot. So the dipole moment of NH2Cl is going to be really strong. If you look at NCl3 though, you have chlorines on all three sides that are kind of pulling for the electrons to a, say, a, to a very similar intensity. Um, the only difference is that the lone pair doesn't really pull as much um, at, at compared to the chlorines, but still your dipole moment is going to be relatively small in NCl3 as compared to NH2Cl. So uh, NH2Cl is highly soluble in water because since it has a really high dipole moment, it's going to have strong intermolecular forces, which is going to let it be very soluble in water. Um, and NH, uh, NCl3 is nearly insoluble because uh, well, it does have a dipole moment, but it's not very strong. So although it's going to be slightly soluble, it's not going to be very soluble. Okay, so both NH2Cl and NCl3 experience um, dipole-dipole intermolecular forces, but since the dipole moment of NH2Cl is greater than the dipole moment of NCl3, it experiences greater IMFs overall, uh, which allows it to be more soluble in water. Um, which, sorry, <laughs> which allows it to be more soluble in water. All right, let's go on to the last part, which is C. The value of your, uh, your enthalpy of vaporization for NCl3 is 32.9 kilojoules per mole. Calculate the amount of energy required to vaporize a 15 gram sample of NCl3, uh, which has a molar mass of 120.36. Well, our first step should be to convert our grams to molar mass. So um, I've been using the black pen a lot. So let's use a different color, let's use blue. Um, so 15 grams of NCl3 times uh, or divided by the molar mass um, so 120.36 grams per one mole of NCl3 and then we know for every one mole of your NCl3 um, you're gonna need 32.9 kilojoules of energy to vaporize uh, that sample so uh, if we do out the math on this we have 15 grams divided by 120.36 and then times 32.9 kilojoules that gets us 4.1 kilojoules of energy so it takes 4.1 kilojoules of energy to vaporize a 15 gram sample of ncl3 um, and that was it for question four question four is one of the the shorter frqs um, i hope you were able to learn something i hope this was helpful um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the, the comments. And I have the rest of the questions for this test. Um, they should pop up there in a playlist. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.